Lucas, as uh, it's been heard before, likes to consider sound 50% of your experience in the movie theater. It's now 75%. Yeah. Auto 3D is in fact a uh, completely new listening experience. It feels like you are there on the set. Oral 3D's unique value proposition to the industry is the ease with which we get these extra tracks into every auditorium in the world. It just gives you more realism. Once this becomes more of a mature technology, I think that'll probably be um, the standard. The difference between surround sound and Auto 3D is that surround sound is a two-dimensional format. All the speakers are located in a horizontal plane where we are sitting in the middle. So it cannot reproduce sounds coming from above us or around us. Auto 3D recreates original spatial sound based on three axes and that's a real three-dimensional system. Now that most of the world is, is moving to digital projection with digital 3D and the other advantages that digital projection equipment holds, what can theaters do to differentiate themselves from one another? And Oral 3D plays a powerful role in that. Oral 3D is all about adding a new dimension to the sonic experience in a movie theater. We take an existing 5.1 layout in a movie theater auditorium and we add height to that system. So you have your traditional left, center, and right screen channels, but we add an additional left, center, right height channel at the top of the screen. We do the same thing for the surrounds. Traditionally, you'll have a left surround array and a right surround array. We also add height to those speaker positions. So we'll add a left surround height and a right surround height. It's all about getting the ability in the system to reproduce the natural ambient acoustics that you find in nature. We also add to that another layer to the dimension, which is a specific overhead channel. Sometimes we call the voice of God. Bandits! Hundreds of them! Six o'clock! It's got German monkey! Let's get him! So we're working on Red Tails, which is uh, George Lucas's film that he's had in development for, gosh, uh, over 20 years at least. This is a story of the Tuskegee Airmen, which are African-American World War II pilots. Half the movie is aerial combat. So yeah. it's sort of the perfect movie to sort of demonstrate height, mm -hmm. and you can't really demonstrate that any better than with airplanes flying overhead. We've done all of that. The first thing that uh, was interesting for us was the fact that it was 5-1, and it's sort of just, it's simply just like 5-1 up on top of itself. So it's a way that we can take our existing 5-1 mixes, and with not too much effort, we can actually make them into 11-1. The, the plug-in that these guys have made is, is, is amazing. Yeah, it's really easy to implement. We use a Wacom tablet to, uh, to draw our pans. I don't think that there's anything here that is uh, that heady that you're not gonna be able to wrap your head around it you know, within uh, a, a day or so yeah, working with it. Yeah, about a day. Yeah, we're very surprised at how fast we're going. And it's, uh, it's great because we get to hear instant access to, yeah. to our, our, our panning. You're, you, you can grab it and see it. Mayday! It was far easier than we expected. The core of the Auto 3D format is related to a revolutionary new invention, uh, a kind of technology which allows mixing and unmixing in the uncompressed audio. So that means the theaters who do not have the Auto 3D decoder, they hear over their normal 5.1 system in the same bandwidth, in the same size, yeah? they hear the standard 5.1 without any kind of concession in the audio quality. But the ones who have installed the Auto 3D system, yeah, then the Auto 3D system reveals out of that 5.1, again, the originally 11.1 artistic created mix that whole concept is very exciting. The yeah. fact that you can take your 11.1 and encode it into a 5.1 and have that sort of as a, a backup as well as um, the single media format to use on all releases. So I think once this becomes more of a mature technology, I think that'll probably be um, the standard. You can, you know, to yeah. use the, the regular DCP 5.1 with your encoded 11.1, it's a great idea. You see a lot of exhibitors trying to uh, brand their own version of premium experience. And that, of course, allows them to get to ticket revenues to be slightly higher, and that increases to the bottom line. Now, there are a lot of different solutions out there that you could do with sound, 
but we're trying to pick a method that is cost effective not only for distribution and how we get the audio to the screens, but also the investment that a theater has to make. So they need to invest more in speakers and amplifiers and in the oral 3D equipment itself, but we need to be realistic and keep it at a level that is economically viable for exhibition.